time on Behind the Waldo Way. I remember stumbling across the Guernsey breed because they're more of a heritage breed. They're rare to find. They represent less than 2% of the dairy breed in the United States, so they're rare to find. And um, I fell in love with her immediately. Just her, her, the look. I mean, she just has this beautiful look. The color, the, the stature, everything about her seemed right. Reese worked hard to secure the right dairy cow with the superior milk, and her herd continued to grow. I always said we were saving the milk money to go and buy our cows, our future because I never wanted the bank to own a cow. I wanted it to be owned by the people that she worked for, the members of the farm. And um, so we would save up our pennies and go buy more cows. And every time it was like this new level or new layer, I would get more cows and it wasn't enough. More cows, more milk, more members, more demand but it kind of changed the dynamics that I wanted in my store. And that was that sense of home and let's have a conversation. Let me get to know you and who you are. And those dynamics started changing and I didn't like it. It was because people were more, if you will, aggressive. It, I said it was Black Friday every Friday on the farm because People were so scared they weren't going to get milk. Which left Reese with a big decision to make. I just told Trenton, I said, either we need to get out. So this was a very critical time. We need to get out because we cannot provide what people need or we've got to go big. Not big like commercial. Reese had something more unique in mind. With the help of Julie, the woman who took a chance on Reese and sold her the first five cows. I asked her, why are you selling your cows? Because I knew how hard they were to come by. And she said, I'm putting in a robotic dairy farm. And I had never heard of a robotic dairy farm until that moment. Finding a company that would take Reese seriously would be another uphill battle, but eventually the work paid off. He talked to me and talked to me. He listened. It was like Julie. He listened. He understood and he thought it would be a perfect fit. So the next thing I knew, Trenton and I are on a plane. We had to get someone else to take care of the cows while we would go and we're on a plane. And here we go into this robotic dairy farm. I do not regret one moment, the technology, bringing the technology on, the expansion, the growth, really catapulting us with technology. Um, I think our cows are much better in that system because the robot doesn't bring feelings. The robot is doing a job and Cows pick up on human feelings, be it good or bad, and they respond and react to those. And um, so it's very important that they feel comfortable and safe when they come into any situation, but especially when they come in to provide milk for us. At that point in time, I was licensed by the state. So I know that their regulation, part of the regulation is you have to get approval of the blueprint of anything that you do, and you have to get approval of equipment. And so I presented the equipment to the state of Texas, the inspectors, and his response to me was, you know you'll be the first robot, a robotic dairy farm in the state of Texas. And I said, you mean I'll be the first raw milk dairy farm in the state of Texas? And he said, no ma'am, you're the first robotic dairy farm in the state of Texas. As far as I know, we're still the only robotic dairy farm in the state. <laughs>